This video is going to be about free energy and equilibria. So free energy is written as delta G, and it's defined as the energy that's available to do work. And it's delta G, which means the change in free energy because we can only measure the change. And so that is going to be equal to delta H, which is our change in enthalpy, which in biology is going to be equal to your total energy, minus T, which is our temperature in kelvins, times delta S, which is our change in entropy. So when we put all of these pieces in this equation, if delta G is less than zero, then we say that that reaction is spontaneous, meaning that it will take place on its own. However, if delta G is greater than zero, then that reaction is non-spontaneous meaning that it will not take place on its own and that we have to add some energy. So spontaneous reactions are going to be exergonic reactions, which means that they release energy, and then non-spontaneous reactions are going to be endergonic, meaning that they require energy. So now let's look a little closer at some spontaneous reactions. So delta G can also be um, defined as, since it is a change in free energy, as our free energy at the end minus our free energy at the beginning. And so for this to be negative, that means that our final free energy is lower than our initial free energy. And since free energy is the amount of energy available to do work, if the final uh, state has less free energy, then that state is less likely to change again. So that would mean that our final state is more stable than our initial state. So this is an important concept to remember in a lot of different biological processes, is when we re reduce our free energy, things are less likely to change. So kind of going along that same process, we're going to look at equilibrium. So at equilibrium, we have the forward and reverse reactions uh, going at the same rate, so we have no net change in the concentration of products and the concentration of reacting, reactants. So when this happens, delta G is actually equal to zero. Um, and so at equilibrium, as we approach equilibrium, our free energy gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that it's becoming uh, more and more stable. And then as we move away from equilibrium, our free energy increases, and that is the energy um, that we're going to need to do work to push our system back towards equilibrium. So just to review, uh, delta G is equal to our change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. If it's a negative number, it's spontaneous or an exergonic reaction. If it's a positive number, then it's going to be non-spontaneous or an endergonic reaction. So as reactions proceed, if you get to a state with the lower uh, free energy, that state is going to be more stable, so it's going to be less likely to change. And that will go all the way till we reach equilibrium where our free energy is zero and the rates of the forward and the reverse reactions are the same. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.